if you want to bake a, a cake or if you want to make an animal feed, you can buy a, every ingredient that goes in that cake and make it, or you can go to the store and buy a cake mix. It's the same with animal feed. So sure. if you want to make a, a pet food or a poultry uh, layer, broiler, breeder, swine, cattle, you're going to buy a premix and it's going to have uh, any combination of vitamins, minerals, other additives in there and you're going to add anywhere from maybe three quarters to one pound of that product per ton of feet. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Walmsley, today, and I'm joined by Kevin Matters. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming. Um, so before a, a little bit of intro, I guess, um, maybe about your current position and then how long you've been in the role, if you don't mind to share with us. Yeah, that'd be, that's great. So uh, I work for BSF Animal Nutrition. On, uh, I am on the vitamin and carotenoid side. We also have a performance ingredient uh, side of our uh, animal nutrition products. So I have, I'm responsible for uh, new business development, technical sales and support for the United States and Canada. Uh, so uh, that's over our vitamins and carotenoids that we manufacture. Uh, so it'd be vitamin A, vitamin E, B2, B5, and then uh, our different carotenoids that we also make would be uh, a yellow, a red, a pink, and you can also add uh, beta carotene in, the, in that uh, portfolio. So I work with our premix customers, feed customers, things like that, our sales team uh, to provide support for them. I've been in this role for um, a year this past March. I really like it. I was able to uh, actually... Uh, Get this role when I was uh, during COVID. I went uh, back to school. I always wanted to get uh, my graduate degree, so uh, was able to go online on the weekends and such uh, when things were closed here in New Orleans for a little bit longer than most places in the in the U.S. And so I really enjoyed going back to school and um, decided I wanted to get back into the vitamin world. So uh, this is my thirty fourth year in the uh, animal feed additive uh, industry. So um, it's just full of great people and so glad to be here and get to talk to you. With science-led solutions that are sustainable, proven and effective, BASF helps you tackle the challenges of poultry nutrition. We offer high quality feed ingredients that enable a more sustainable production and help you achieve your animal performance targets. We call it the science of sustainable feed that succeeds. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, obviously you have a, a you know a unique perspective on this uh, you know area of the industry um, with all your experience that you have so far, and so we're really excited to um, talk to you a little bit um, about premixes and vitamin A today. I do have before we get started, just to get to know you a little bit more, um, we're going to do some rapid fire. All right, um, this or that. Sure. All right. So, uh, broiler or layer? Broiler. Fried or scrambled egg? Fried. Nutrition or veterinarian? Uh, veterinarian. Ah, PSA or triple AP? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're going to have to help me with that. <laughs> <laughs> triple AP is the uh, veterinary side of um, kind of equivalent to PSA in, in oh, general. I got you. Well, I like veterinarian because part of my, my uh, actual master's in agriculture, my focus was veterinary management, so... Ah, very interesting. Part of my uh, tenure working for a, a premix company for 20 years was operations management. And so uh, I decided I took one of the veterinary management classes and I really enjoyed it. So um, it was looking at different aspects of uh, um, everything from uh, drugs to uh, facilities to uh, any type of thing uh, as far as managing uh, a vet. Uh, clinic or hospital. Yeah. So I really, really like that. Not so much the veterinary science, but uh, it was interesting to me on uh, different uh, problems or solutions they would uh, pose to us. And coming from a uh, 
uh, operations uh, background along with uh, sales and, and such was was interesting. Like one was uh, we want to put in this piece of equipment, but it it's this big and it weighs this much. And like, well, our vet clinic here in New Orleans that we use is in an old house. And I'm not sure the floor would support that kind of weight. Uh, so it was every kind of thinking uh, like that, uh, past experience. Uh, so I really enjoyed the veterinary management side of, of getting my master's. But also uh, our research project was on chelated minerals. So I, uh, I got to do a little bit of everything, uh, So which is what I like as far as my role now is it's, uh, it's vitamin focused, carotenoid focused, but uh, the background I have versus our other folks on the team is uh, in the premix plant, been in tons and tons of feed mills and uh, been in the feed additive world uh, for integrators, uh, everything from uh, poultry to alligators to pets to <laughs> beef cattle, everything you can think of, uh, uh, lab rats, uh, guinea pigs, uh, all kinds of uh, things that have come up over the years. That's interesting. Yeah, I mean, and then I, I can I can guess that the the background with the the veterinary management practice management also from that standpoint, um, you know, it has great relevance for the animal feed industry in general. Um, really, a lot of different industries, but I mean, you know, a lot of people don't have. You know, you think it works on paper, but like you said, with the example of that that practice um, there in New Orleans, that it, you know, some b- big piece of equipment's not going to work in a an older house where something is set up, and right. you know, depending upon what the manufacturing facility is, and if the or feed mill, if they're able to do liquid application or, you know, what their capacity might be in bin space and so many, you know, different things that could vary um, from that standpoint and regulations too. Yes, exactly. So another uh, like example, uh, so our vet clinic is just about 600 feet from our house so I can walk our dogs there. They have a double door and they will buzz you in because they have a pharmacy Mm -hmm. uh, in a pharmacy. And so uh, that's they have extra security at these places that have a, uh, a pharmacy like that and uh, how they have to count drugs every day and all that. And just like being in a premix plant or a feed mill, we had to do our drug inventory every day also and keep a lot sure. of that. So uh, a lot of uh, nice, relatable uh, concepts. So I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, Nick, you know, helps me every day, uh, I think, with uh, dealing with feed mills or premix customers. For sure. That's that's really neat. Well, speaking of premixes, um, can you give us a little bit of background on what animal feed premixes um, are and maybe how they're used? Yeah. So the e- the easiest way people ask, what do, what do I do? Like I'm, I'm at dinner, I'm hanging out and I meet someone new. So what do you do? And I said, well, I, I'm in the, uh, we sell vitamins that go into premixes and they're like, Oh, is that steroids? I'm like, no, 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 not. not I, don't <laughs> I don't know if I'm selling steroids. steroid talk. <laughs> That's honestly the first thing they ask. I said, no. So I always say, if you, if you want to bake a, a cake or if you want to make an animal feed, you can buy a every ingredient that goes in that cake and make it, or you can go to the store and buy a cake mix. It's the same with animal feed. So sure. if you want to make a, a pet food or a poultry. Uh, layer broiler breeder swine cattle you're going to buy a premix and it's going to have uh, any combination of vitamins minerals other additives in there and you're going to add anywhere from maybe three quarters to one pound of that product per ton of feet right so it's very important uh, that premix is made correctly uh, and the ingredients go into it are of high quality and uh, able to make it through all the processes in premix and feed making uh, to end up in that animal. So uh, that's how I explain it. And they're like, oh, okay. But they always hit me with that. Uh, is it a steroid? <laughs> yeah, I think I think a lot of us uh, in, in this world uh, from the animal feed side or in animal industry production ag can relate to that too, because that is usually the number one, uh, you know, question or, you know, uh, assumption out of someone's mouth. <laughs> it's about steroids for sure. I've made some chicken wings this weekend for our friends and they're like, oh, these are really good. They must not have any steroids in them. 
I said, okay, um, no, no, none, none of no chicken, no chicken you purchase has steroids in it. So don't yeah, worry. come on, people, it's illegal. Come on, and there's there's a lot of publications out there um, that that can help you know be able to explain why we don't use them also. But <laughs> uh, so, what kind of percentage of the I know you were, you said you worked with a lot of different species, but, um, you know, what kind of percentage of, of your, the, I guess your current, uh, work is poultry versus other species? Um, I would say poultry is a large part and then cattle would be the second part, uh, second most I'm working with, but mm-hmm. poultry as is a little bit different where I try to explain, uh, how it works here in the U.S. versus our uh, colleagues internationally for BSF, that those those chickens are being fed every day sure. uh, with feed, whereas cattle may be on pasture, may be on hay, and you're just going to supplement feed or su- or tubs or minerals based on what they're lacking in that. So you know the most the biggest part of our business right now would be uh poultry by far poultry okay all right well great thanks kevin i think we had a lot of great um topics that we covered today um and really just kind of random that i think that people don't necessarily think about when in relationship to i mean one from the veterinary management but then also introducing getting our feet wet into the premix um industry um so appreciate your insight on that and look forward to having you join us back on another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Great. Thank you so much, Kevin. All right. Thanks, Kevin. We'll see you soon.